everyone, welcome to this draw with me of a shoe shop I came across at Asakusa, Tokyo. I start with a pencil sketch using my reference photo. Holding my pencil at an angle, I can then match the perspectives to my drawing. I try to be accurate, but I also don't mind being a little bit off. I prefer not to use any rulers for my illustrations, just to keep the line work more loose and interpretive. For the reference photo, I couldn't get the entire building in one shot. I took one of the top and bottom, and then I roughly stitched them together in Photoshop to build my reference picture. There's bound to be some perspective distortions using this method since I took the photos at ground level. That's okay, I create my own perspective rules to keep the vertical lines straight. When I start with outlining, I tend to draw in the objects in the foreground first. So in this illustration, it was the shoe boxes and shop details on the ground floor. It's kind of a reverse way of thinking from the pencil sketch stage. Because I focus on micro elements first, whereas for the pencil sketch, I'm capturing large structural elements and ensuring the base perspective is how I like it. Sometimes I still switch between pencil and colored pencil when I want a bit more framework to work off of. I've been thinking about opening up to answering some questions you may have in my future videos. I'd love to chat with you about my process, or art supplies, or maybe even sharing about the illustration industry. I don't have a talking video about how I became an illustrator yet, but you can check out a previous subtitled one if you're interested in that story. Please let me know if you're curious about anything in the comments. I'm going to be using gouache for most of this painting. I think gouache will best convey the texture and solidity of the concrete buildings in the scene. I am using a synthetic sable brush by Pentel called Neo Sable. The most common color I use in gouache is white. With watercolors, you can pick up less pigment or dilute with water for a lighter color. But for gouache, if I want to maintain a thicker consistency, and higher opacity, then I will use white as my mixing color. Actually, there are many kinds of white gouache paints on the market. I'm still learning about the subtle differences, but I tend to pick zinc white when I want a slightly warmer tone, permanent white when I want a cool and strong pure tone, and I believe mixing white is almost a bit transparent. accidentally dropped a splash of water onto the painting. Gouache and watercolors are both water-soluble paints prone to lifting. I used a dry brush to gently absorb excess water. Using a tissue will be too harsh in this scenario. I applied light strokes to blend out the watermark. Then I took a hair dryer to it and here's the result. Painting windows is always a fun part for me. Glass is a light, transparent material, so I'm using watercolors to mimic those properties. I use the wet-on-wet -wet technique, applying a base of water first so that the pigments will bleed and blend smoothly. Within the area of the window, I map out light and dark areas. I never use a pure black and opt for dark mixes instead because it introduces reflected colors in the interior. Sometimes the paper is too wet and there's too much blending, so I wait a bit and continue.
even in small details such as the stripe on the canopy, I avoid using a flat color. I'm making the top bit just a little bit darker orange to give the object some more dimension. I think all these little considerations help to establish a lived-in environment. I'm treating this illustration as a spot illustration, meaning that it doesn't have a rendered background or a ground plane. It is a kind of shape floating in white space, although the geometries of the buildings does situate and give weight in space. I wanted the focus to be on the interesting intersections of building elements, so it was less important to show the sky and ground. I like how the edges of the composition are brought to attention. It really highlights the signage, lights, and canopy sticking out. I think this composition will adapt really well to a cover page illustration for my future Japan travelogue book. I'm using watercolors for the bottom part of the illustration. There really isn't a hard rule for me when to use gouache and when to use watercolors. It isn't a clear divide between top and bottom. I deliberately mix in the two types of paints so that visually there is a comfortable balance of opaque versus transparent qualities. Maybe the guideline I established for myself is to use gouache for larger structural elements because I want the element to read as a solid whole and I feel that I can control the shade of color easier for larger areas when using gouache. Here are the two outlining colored pencils I mainly use. The Eagle Verithin brand is a vintage one I picked up in an earlier vlog. It has a very stiff and sharp lead, and I use it for the little fur strokes for the bunny. The Mitsubishi pencil is softer, but it leaves a darker mark and I used it for the outline. When I'm so in the zone for a painting, sometimes I forget I have access to art materials beyond just paints. Adding in small details with colored pencils or markers is great to apply a vibrant stroke of color without constantly having to clean the paintbrush. It's a test of patience to come up with designs for the shoes, bags, and hats. The little bit of pattern gives it just a bit more character for the overall painting. I wonder if you noticed those little details. I think our brains are so wired to look at images as a brief macro snapshot, particularly through the nature of Instagram. That is why I wanted to share my creation process in video form to give you a little bit more insight. Personally, I think it feels more real. A video makes the action of painting more tangible and interesting. And here is the completed painting. Thanks so much for spending time with me. If you're interested in this style of illustration, I have a 64-page art book featuring nostalgic streetscapes of Hong Kong available in my online shop. I hope you're having a cozy fall season. I'm constantly hugging a hot pack to stay warm, but until then, I'll see you for the next video. Bye!